Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexander Falk, and I'm the District Governor 2223 for our Rotary District 7930 here in Northeastern Mass and Southern New Hampshire. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our World Peace and Understanding event tonight with the topic of uh, the Tutu Desk campaign. Um, I first heard about uh, the Tutu Desk campaign in January last year as part of our International Assembly when uh, when Jennifer Jones and her husband talked to us, budding district governor elects about um, this wonderful program, and I was hooked. It it was something that immediately spoke to me. Um, I made a donation and and was lucky enough to get a couple of tutu discs in my hands, and have since then um, been talking about them as part of my district governor club visits in our district. And of course, uh, many of you may have heard about it at that point in time for the first time too. And I'm also very happy to say that my, my own home club, the Robert Rotary Club has embraced this, um, this fundraising effort in a, in a manner that has far exceeded my hopes. Um, and so we will hopefully be able to make a meaningful uh, donation to the two to desk campaign uh, fairly soon. And I'm also talking to our District Rotary Foundation Chair, John Arsenault, who is on the call tonight about uh, putting together a potential district uh, grant that uh, that we can uh, put out to the clubs uh, to maybe finance a production run. Um, but that's enough about me. Um, the evening here really is about our three guest speakers we have here tonight. We have uh, Francis Callard from uh, South Africa um, on the call. We have uh, District Governor Randall Barkley um, from District 7870 in uh, Vermont and New Hampshire on the call. And we have uh, my friend Charlie Milner from the Marblet Rotary Club on the call as our speakers tonight. Um, and they will all uh, tell us about their involvement with the Tutu Desk campaign and uh, what their journey was so far. And um, then we'll hopefully have, uh, after each of their presentations, time for questions and answers. Uh, Randall is presently in Honduras uh, on a Rotary program. So his presentation will be recorded, was recorded, and will be given as a video, but he will be here live for the Q&A part. Um, and with that, I would love to hand it over to you, Francis. Um, welcome to, uh, to Rotary District 7930, and please take it away. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm sharing screen now. Uh, just a thumbs up, please, if you can uh, see the shared screen. Well, good evening, Rotary friends and friends of Rotary. And thank you very much, DG Alexander, for this opportunity to talk to you this evening about something really close to my heart, the Tutu Desk Project. As introduced, Francis Callard, a past district governor from the Rotary Club of Northcliffe, Johannesburg, uh, South Africa, and I'm also the project lead on the Tutu Desk project. And I do hope that they, by the end of the evening, you will share some of my enthusiasm for the project. I'm sure many of you have heard about the project, but I hope that this presentation will fill you in some of the details of which you may not be aware and give you a better understanding of the project, how it came about, and why we feel so passionate about it. This is a tutu desk. Some of you may have seen one, and some of you may even have held one. It is difficult to describe the tangible experience of writing on a firm surface that sits comfortably on one's lap. But perhaps as some context, think about a child who has to take a piece of paper and is asked, to write the alphabet or some simple words on this paper without the benefit of a desk or firm writing surface. One can just imagine the difficulty that the individual would experience. Let's trans so we've transferred those frustrations to an early learner and what would be their commitment and attention span under those difficulties. Welcome to the Tutu Desk project, because if that is the problem definition, the Tutu Desk is certainly an answer. This slide shows the tutu desk in the printing phase. On the bottom left-hand side of the screen, we have the blanks 
that have fed and placed in the platen, which then has six passes under the silkscreen printer, providing a high quality and durable print that has a guaranteed life of six years and an effective life of some 10 years. This will see the child throughout their school career when the, with the desk exposed to all the elements of the environment and hopefully being carried every day to and from school. This is one of the features of the project. The desks are not part of a pool, they belong to a child, and this will give them the sense of ownership and pride that they will look after them during their school career. Maybe you've heard the catchphrase that for a cup of coffee and a croissant, you can change your child's life forever. The $20 bill in your pocket may be small change to you, but to a child who may never know the donor or the ins and outs of the project and make a difference that will live with them throughout their life. I have an engineering background, and one of the things one learns very quickly is that design problems cannot be solved in the maintenance phase. Or to put it another way, upstream problems cannot be solved downstream. Taking a systemic view of the education problems in Southern Africa, without a solid grounding in the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic, we cannot equip a child today to compete in the industrialized economy of today. So this is a collaboration, a collaboration between four Southern African districts and the Tutu, Desmond Tutu, Tutu Desk campaign. It is a unique collaboration where we, from our Rotary side, harness the power worldwide of like-minded Rotarians and the unique expertise of the Tutu Desk campaign to provide the Tutu Desks to early learners in schools lacking basic infrastructure. We've often been asked, why can't we make the discs out of a cheaper material? And plywood has often been quoted as an example. Well, there's no magic to a tutu desk. Anyone can make a lap desk and give it a coat of paint, but it will not have the comfort or the durability of the tutu desk. To quote John Ruskin, there's hardly anything in the world that cannot be made a little worse and sold a little cheaper, and he who considers price only is this man's lawful prey. We've also been asked, can the desk be manufactured locally? And the answer is a qualified yes. Uh, the, locally, it mean in the country of the uh, recipient. And I'd be happy to share those qualifications, but in the interests of time, that is for another purpose, or for another forum at least. On the rationale and purpose for the two to death, well, this slide, I'm sure, is self-evident. We identify with the Tutu Desk campaign and its ideals and objectives. It aligns with the foundation focus area of basic education and literacy, simple and flexible in scope and contribution from small to large, trusted partner and brand. The uh, Tutu Desk name, I'm sure, needs no introduction as a Nobel Peace Laureate. And um, yeah, he's been well known and highly respected wherever his presence has been felt. And the success is very easy to measure by the funds raised and the desks provided. And finally, it certainly promotes the Rotary brand and values. But a bit of history about the project, which actually had its genesis in 2004 with the lap desk company. And in 2005, Desmond, Archbishop Desmond Tutu became the patron of the project. 2009, this was rebranded to the Community Desk, and in 2011, an official launch of the Desmond Tutu Tutu Desk campaign. So this is quite a history to the lap desk itself. And how did we get involved? Well, the Centennial Project of Africa was approaching for its 100-year centennial, and at a council of governors in February 2020, the idea was formed, well, why don't we have this collaborative project of Southern African districts with the Desmond Tutu Desk campaign. And so the project was born and became for us a Rotary Africa Centennial project. I must mention that we are not the uh, uh, only ones providing Tutu Desks. They will continue to receive grants and uh, donations from other major organizations who will also put their own imprint and branding on the desks. But ours is a fairly unique one in that we are recognized as being a partner with them in our worldwide collaboration to raise funds and promote the project. 
This map gives you an idea of uh, where we are operational, the four districts of Southern Africa. And you'll see an arrow indicating to uh, districts in East Africa who have certainly expressed an interest in the desk, whether how this will materialize, we are still waiting to, to see. They have uh, their own set of challenges. And actually, surprisingly enough, from what we are now understanding through the conversations we're having with them, that their schools are actually fairly well equipped. But nevertheless, this map also really gives the uh, uh, talks to why the project, and it needs no further explanation as to where the, the real shortages of desks lie. This slide is a, a mugshot of who's who of our fortnightly committee meetings. And in the top left-hand corner, we have Tandeke Tutu Gache. She's the daughter of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the late Archbishop, and is the CEO of the Tutu Desk campaign. Uh, second from the left is Shane Immelman, who is the COO of the Tutu Desk campaign. And third from the left, past District Governor Shirley Downey, also from South Africa, from District 9400, my home district, and she is the project chair. The rest of us around the table, well, representing uh, all the districts that I have previously mentioned, as well as a number of representatives from the United States as well. So we have a fairly diverse committee uh, and actually great fun in our meetings, particularly meeting fortnightly. So how do we fund this project? Well, we have a three pronged funding strategy. The first is social media, which is really targeting the small donations of $20 up to $100, which would go into a general pool. We've asked clubs, and many clubs have responded to this with club donations of something of the order of $100 or so, which would provide 10 plus desks per club to help equip a school. And if clubs wish to collaborate, well, then we can uh, uh, have a school with 250 desks, they can adopt the school, so to speak. Finally, corporate donations of a thousand plus desks where they could have their own logo branded onto the desks in conjunction with our rotary branding. To this end, we have a fully fledged South African accounts. We have a US dollar account, but our primary source of a, a, a funding route through the USA is through the Rotary Club of San Francisco too. Uh, where they also provide um, what we would say uh, tax certificates for the donations. On our own website, we have uh, three buttons, which donations to uh, uh, food parcels, donations to our wheelchair project, and finally, a tutor desk campaign donation button. But how does the project work? Well, the tutor desk Pro program and the Department of Education have a very good uh, uh, relationship and have a database of schools that are in need of assistance. Using this as a basic starting point, once schools are identified, they are approached or they may approach us. And if they meet the qualifying criteria, the governing body and the headmaster and the key staff are asked to commit to the project in writing. This commitment says that they would receive the desks, they would undergo the teacher and the learner orientation, and that they would be party to the impact monitoring of the project six months or so after receipt of the desks. And this is the non-negotiable part, because without the impact monitoring, we do not know the extent how the project is working and what we should be adjusting. And it gives us that essential feedback. For the execution of the project within South Africa, the Tutor Desk campaign will uh, actually deliver the desks to the schools, and we will see something about that shortly. And outside of South Africa, uh, Rotary clubs will identify the schools and take the desks directly to the schools. Currently, we have the uh, arrangement that 50% of the desks are distributed within South Africa and 50% in countries outside of South Africa. Should a donor specify um, 
a particular wish for distribution of the desks to a particular area or a particular school or a particular country. Uh, insofar as possible, we uh, make that wish come true and can happen. Finally, for, for recognition, uh, some uh, clubs would like to see a donor billboard at the school. Of course, this is possible. Uh, unfortunately, that's at their own cost. And for sponsors with a thousand or more desks, then they can have the desk branded with their own logo as well, indicating uh, their contribution to the project. So this brings in place a couple of boundaries of the project that small donations are within from one to 250 desks, identified schools, a minimum of 250. And when we approach school for this, we equip the whole school. And we believe this is particularly important so that no child asks the question, why them and why not me? So requests which we've had in the past, well, could we please have uh, uh, 20 or 30 desks to give to either just one class or to some particular school children? Regrettably, we've had to say, terribly sorry, we can't do that because that falls outside the boundaries of the project and we cannot do the essential impact monitoring. We said, not for club distribution to individuals, or schools outside the program. And the promotion of the project is uh, <laughs> straightforward. We have videos, we have a brochure, we have a Facebook page, uh, uh, WhatsApp, uh, videos uh, geared to WhatsApp that, that can be sent over the phone. Uh, but the best promotion of the project, after all, is by word of mouth. And sometimes it is presentations like this and we are happy to do them anywhere anytime worldwide we have only one caveat please and that's in english <laughs> and so what's the current status of the project well bank accounts are operational i'm sure you would appreciate that we have the promotional material uh we promotion to club presentations south africa the usa the uk i should add australia and that because they have also come on board uh, president jennifer jones has her own desk and uh, corporates have been approached. Response from the corporates in South Africa has been a little disappointing at the moment because they are so focused on what we call uh, CSI, Community Social Initiatives, uh, and sometimes feeding projects tend to take a higher priority than the tutor desk with them. We have discussed global grants with RI. And initially, the discussions were not favorable, but we are revisiting this. And with our redesign of the uh, desk to uh, change the uh, words that are used on the desk from a rote learning to more a phonetic approach and enhancing the teacher orientation on the use of the desk, we're actually very positive that we will be able to uh, be successful in a global grant. And we've had a thousand manufactured. We've had a, our second production run of 2000 manufactured. And so far, we have commitments for uh, sufficient funds for 3000 desks. And these are now in the pipeline. I've already mentioned worldwide presentations in English, please. <laughs> So what has the project done? Well, without going through the whole detail of the slide, obviously uh, children better reading. Teachers said that they can interact better with their students. Uh, le learners were able to write during a lesson. The classroom was more organized. Teachers said the homework was better. The pupils had a better concentration. The learner experience was a better concentration. The learners had a longer attention span, more motivated, et cetera. And I'm sure you could just appreciate the range of benefits to the projects. I must say that this uh, impact study was um, sponsored by the Australian Aid, and it does date to about uh, 2012, 2013, but we have no reason to believe that the uh, uh, impact itself would have changed from then. These are photographs which were taken at our first handover at a school in the Eastern Cape part of South Africa, which is really a disadvantaged area, happy faces. But if you look at the infrastructure of the, or the school behind, I'm sure you'll say, well, this is a particularly basic school, and that is really the case. The infrastructure is minimal. It's 
really, really basic, unfortunately, and it's nothing that we would recognize in one of the schools which you would be accustomed to. Top right hand there is uh, the typical state of the, the desks in the classroom, which uh, talks to what I was saying about the current infrastructure at the school. A different handover, and this is a far more recent one, we were handed out uh, 12,000 desks to a school not very far from Johannesburg, in fact, less than uh, 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 30 miles from here. And top left, we have Jacob Romaro. He is the operations officer of the Tutu Desk campaign. Wonderful chap, fluent in many of the African languages, um, busy handing out the desks. On the bottom right, we have uh, one of our past district governors and also a member of our committee in an interaction with one of the recipients of the Tutu Desk. And there they are being taken through their desks as well. Smiles and smiles of happy faces of all the children who've received their desks. Um, and really, this is what it's all about. It was really a great occasion because in this photograph, we uh, also had our district governor. She is center of picture. To your right of the picture, our uh, incoming uh, district governor elect to the uh, left of um, uh, uh, Mr. Governor, there we have Shirley as the project chair. It was a boiling hot day. They all complained of heat stroke at the end of the day, but nevertheless, a fully worthwhile day. On the next slide, it is a very short video. I'm afraid the sound is terrible, um, but it will talk. It talks to one of the teachers and her impression of the desk and what it means to them. Now, Francis, I don't think the sound is coming through at the moment. Right. Sorry. Terribly short, but what she was saying is we are so grateful. Sorry about that. I forgot to add the sound to this one. We are so grateful. I was looking at this and I could see it has all the maps. It is integrated even with the language and the flags. Thank you so much. Um, you didn't miss much not having the sound on it. Uh, I had to play that about 10 times to be able to pick up those words as well. But that was the teacher's comment uh, to our district uh, governor at the time and the happy pupils. And let's go there. That is the Tutor Desk project. Be happy to take any questions, but perhaps you want to hold those to the end. But uh, DJ Alexander, thank you ever so much for this opportunity to, to present the project. And um, I, I do hope that... Uh, uh, share some of my enthusiasm for this project thank you very much indeed. thank you so much francis before we get to questions um i would love to welcome uh, our i president jennifer jones to the call uh jennifer thank you so much for dialing in from a plane i believe you're above panama is what i understand i'm uh, i'm we haven't actually taken off yet i'm uh, on the tarmac in panama heading to guatemala for a uh, impact tour stop to showcase basic education and literacy and so what more opportune time than to be able to uh, tune in to this wonderful conversation about the two two desks and a passion point of mine. So I'm thrilled to hear that you are um, all galvanizing around this project and the uh, presentation. Thank you so much for what it is that you're doing. It's amazing. So um, Alexander, just glad to be here to support everything that you're doing tonight. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's wonderful to see you. And thanks for making the time to dial in from the tarmac. That's that's unbelievable dedication. No, it's 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 supporting the incredible work that you're doing and everyone that you're inspiring. And um, certainly our uh, Tutu Desk Ambassador, Tendeka Tutu, uh, Desmond Tutu's daughter. Uh, we had the opportunity to, I had the opportunity to name her as an ambassador of our organization just a few months ago. And uh, I couldn't be more pleased that we're supporting this incredible project to put desks into the hands of millions of children um, across not only Africa, but uh, the plan is for the rest of the world as well. And so um, thank you to everyone who's so inspired by the movement because it's quite incredible. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I believe you, you're meeting with her in, in Johannesburg in, in a few weeks, right? We are at the beginning of March. We have the Champions of Inclusion Awards that are going to be held at the Tutu Foundation in uh, Cape Town. And we're going to have a couple of days there, certainly with uh, the Tutu Foundation and being able to 
uh, highlight the work of uh, six incredible honorees for our organization. And uh, we're also going to be able to put it through the framework of the Tutu Foundation and also the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Um, their uh, CEO is going to be joining us as well and, and adding some leverage and weight to it. And uh, so certainly we're dancing an incredibly profound world company as an organization. And uh, certainly I'm very pleased and proud to uh, um, represent us, each and every one of us at this, uh, at this event and lots of Rotarians and our Rotary family will be there in attendance as well. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Anything else you want to share with us tonight before I, I let your captain take off? <laughs> Just profound gratitude for everything that all of you are doing. Um, thank you for being part of the Imagine Rotary Year. And uh, I just am eternally grateful that everyone sees the, the benefit of being part of our movement. Uh, I've said it many times, we're more than a club, we're a movement. And Alexander, you're a great example of that. So thank you to everyone who's participating tonight. And uh, thank you for letting me jump in. I know a little bit unexpectedly, but I didn't want to miss it. It, it's wonderful to see you and, and thank you for jumping on the call. I really appreciate it, especially from a plane on the tarmac. <laughs> Have a safe flight. Be well, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank bye bye. You. Take, take care. Well, that was wonderful. Um, I had hopes for this uh, short uh, conversation with Jennifer, but I had not dared to announce it to anybody. Uh, that's why we only announced three speakers, but I'm, I'm glad that Jennifer could make it. Um, at this point in time, I think, um, Francis, if, if you are up for staying on for a little bit longer, I think we should go to the next presentation and then do Q&A at the end. Or would you prefer if we did Q&A for your part now so you can go to bed because it's like 1.30 a.m.? I'm up to staying on. You're up to staying on. Wonderful. I'm okay. up to staying on. I'm with you. I'm up to stay on. Thank you. I, I so appreciate that. Um, so with that in mind, let me bring on Charlie Milner from my own Marblehead Rotary Club uh, to be our next speaker. Um, Charlie, please take it away. Thank you, Alex. And uh, Francis, great to see you again. Um, Francis and I and my wife and Shirley Downey on the committee had an opportunity to have dinner about three weeks ago in Johannesburg. So uh, it's great to see you. Um, in contrast to Francis' presentation, my presentation is going to be from the perspective of a member of a club. Um, and let me just start by saying that for me, two two desks are a convergence of two passions. One of those passions is being part of Rotary. And the other passion is a project that my wife and I founded about over 20 years ago called the Lilydale Literacy Project. It was because of our experience with the Lilydale Project that I immediately recognized the need and importance of Tutu Desks. We operated in a rural community bordering Kruger Park, which would be the equivalent of South Africa's Yellowstone. Toby, my wife, and a team of South African educators provided training for South Africa for, for local teachers in the teaching of English, which is South African's official language, but it's one of 11 languages spoken in South Africa. And for this group of teachers, their home language, their mother tongue is Songa. Most of them were members of the Shangan tribe. Um, and, and the ability to teach English is important because being fluent in English is a, you know, a critical skill to have in an area where tourism is a major industry and a major employer. So this training that we did through our project included two separate one week uh, training sessions. And each of those sessions was followed by an individual class visit uh, by my, again, by my wife, Toby and myself. Um, so we became very familiar 
with over 20 primary schools in the school district or circuit as they're called there, and 10 high schools. So by, I guess, at least our local standards here, it's a, it's a, it's a very large school district. Uh, it included 10,000 learners as students are called there. And so we had firsthand knowledge and, and, and had visited these schools regularly and saw the range of conditions that existed there. And they basically ranged, quite frankly, from deplorable to almost adequate, but barely. Um, and yes, we saw classrooms without desks or chairs. Um, sometimes there were chairs and the kids would write by kneeling on the floor and writing on the seat of the desk. Uh, many times they'd take the chairs outside and, and meet outside when the weather was good. Um, but that's why when Alexander came to my club, the Marblehead Club, uh, as and presented his district governor's goals for the year, um, he hadn't finished his presentation when I mentioned to one of our co-presidents that I wanted to take charge of a 2-2 desk campaign for the club. Um, I started by doing some due diligence. I didn't want to ask people for money without being sure what I was asking them for money for. Uh, and that got me to in contact with uh, Francis and also uh, Sue Rokaw, who is a US-based member of his committee. Um, and then I started planning a, a, a fundraising campaign our, club, our club's board allowed us or, or agreed to dedicate two months worth of happy dollars for tutu desks. Um, and at our first meeting, the, and those were gonna be the months of November and December. And at our first meeting in November, I made a presentation to the club and showed photos that we had in our photo library of all the schools that we had visited and the conditions of those schools. And that day, and I think Terry, I think Terry Curran was there that day, we raised over $500 in happy dollars, which is about three times what our normal take would be, and a great start. And since many of us can appreciate since COVID hit, in-person attendance at meetings is not what it used to be. And I didn't want those non-attendees to be denied the opportunity to contribute to a 2-2 desk campaign. So I sent out a club-wide email or, or communication, and that generated quite a few number of additional contributions to the campaign. And then there was another group and another constituency that I wanted to solicit from. And that was the group and the folks who had contributed to our Lilydale project. Several years ago, uh, as our project evolved and the expense needs went down, we told them after 20 years to put their checkbooks away. But Tutu Desk was a great opportunity to uh, reconnect with them and uh, when I asked them to support the campaign, they responded the same way they had in the past, which was very generously. So as of today, we've raised over $15,000 for Tutu deaths, and we're not done. First, I want to uh, engage our Interact Club. I don't think there's anything more powerful than students helping students. It's a powerful message. And second, I want to make a community-wide effort using a combination of print and social media. So there's one other aspect that I want to talk about, and, and, and Francis, I think, alluded to this as well, uh, but it doesn't relate to fundraising. On the day that uh, Alexander addressed our club, he brought a tutu desk as a prop. I went home with that 
tutu desk and showed it to my wife. Um, the one that has so passionate about teaching kids how to read. Within a few minutes, looking at the desktop, she said, they need to change that. Um, and what she was referring to was the letter C. And as you know, there are the alphabet is around the perimeter of the uh, of the tutu desk. And the word for C was chicken. She said, no, it needs to be cow or cat. Chicken is for CH, the CH sound. Well, I said, I'm not sure I have the leverage quite now to make that request. Well, it's wrong and it should be changed. So I began an email exchange with Francis and over time made the suggestion to change the C and a couple of other letters or a couple of other word sounds. He couldn't have been more accepting of that recommendation and indicated that they had received other recommendations as well. So when we met with Francis for dinner a few weeks ago, he indicated that the entire desktop is under review by a team of educators. Well, I'm honored to be included on this distinguished panel tonight, and I hope my talk stimulates added enthusiasm for tutu desks around the district. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charlie. That was wonderful. And I love the personal touch and the background story. Um, it's it's really wonderful uh, how you picked up this uh, this campaign and, and made it your own and, and got our own Marble Rotary Club to donate uh, so much money to this effort. It, it, it's really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, I'm going to play a video of my friend, uh, District Governor Randall Barkley from Rotary District uh, 7870. And then um, after that, we're going to have time, hopefully, for some Q&A with everybody. Uh, let me see if I can get the screen sharing going here. Good evening. I'm Randall Barclay, and I'm the district governor for District 7870, in, which covers southern Vermont and southern New Hampshire. My talk this evening is being recorded as I'm on our me district's medical mission to Honduras, and hopefully I'll be able to join you in person on the Zoom call. I'm delighted that your district governor, Alex Falk, invited me to participate in this World Peace and Understanding event. I suspect, like most of you, I joined my Rotary Club to make a difference in my local community. And tonight, I'm pleased to talk about the transformation that's taken place from me primarily focusing on my local community to shifting to doing good in the world. A few months ago, I was listening to a Rotary podcast and one of the participants said, if you haven't found your passion in Rotary yet, you probably haven't looked hard enough. Well, in my case, I seem to have developed multiple passions as I've learned more about our great organization. So what I, what I knew about Rotary's mission statement was I knew that we were there to provide service to, the other, to others. I knew from the four-way test we were here to promote integrity. What I didn't know was that part of Rotary's mission was to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace. Now, my club had provided me with lots of opportunities to do international services, and these were the areas that I was focused on, and I did these all over the world. But tonight, I'm going to focus on just two of them as they relate to Southern Africa, and particularly South Africa. I'm going to talk about global grants, but I'm only going to talk about one global grant. I'm going to talk about my first global grant. And then I'm going to talk about a district grant project that took place in South Africa, which I think will, will, will tie in with what we're talking about with the Tutu Desk campaign. So I'd heard about global grants, but I had no idea how to get involved. So in 2018, I signed up to go to the Rotary International Convention in Toronto. It was my first convention. And I was told, you never know who you're going to meet and who you're going to talk to at the convention. Well, as chance would have it, on a Tuesday night, I was heading out to the host hospitality event and we boarded a bus to go out to the suburbs of Toronto. And the traffic was horrible. A half an hour journey became an hour and a half journey. And so I was chatting with my seat companion 
and I found out it was District Governor-elect Casper Kruger from District 9350, which covers the western part of South Africa, the countries of Namibia and Angola. And Casper said if I was interested in global grants, I should really talk with their grant expert, Helene Visser, from the Bloberg Rotary Club. And so Diane and I arranged a visit for later that year to Helene's club and to meet her and to work on a surface project. When we got there, Helene told us about this project she was working on at the local hospital. Bloberg had adopted the TB wing, the tuberculosis wing of the Tigerberg Children's Hospital, and that they were in need of a new pediatric bronchoscope. Helene asked us if we would be the international partner on a $220,000 global grant to provide a pediatric bronchoscope to the Tigerberg Children's Hospital. The question for us was, how would a small club like mine participate in such a grant, let alone be international host? So what I did was I returned to the United States and sat down with our district governor, Venu Rao, and our, past district, and our past district governor and district foundation chair, Rick Manganello, And they showed me how to pull together a syndication of clubs. And in the end, we funded over half the cost of the project. But just delivering the equipment at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020, and getting it working in the hospital, well, that felt good. But it was Dr. Pierre who said to us, that this equipment was incrementally going to save the lives of 70 additional children each year. And there were hundreds of children that were going to benefit from the medical treatment of using this equipment on a daily basis in the hospital. And that gave me the motivation to want to do more and more projects. I've done over four grants now just in South Africa alone. Uh, and I've done other grants around the world, but I just wanted to keep on doing this. So the second grant I want to talk to you about was an international district grant. So back in 2013, my friend Carolyn Herrick, who uh, was transferred by her Fortune 500 company to South Africa. She had called me and asked her to come down and visit her. And so what would I do? Of course, I invited her to come to the local Rotary Club in Hout Bay. Uh, she finally joined the club in 2018 and is currently serving as the club's president. Carolyn led a project in Hout Bay to conduct eye testing on elementary school students and provide prescription glasses if we needed them. So the question I ask now and we'll come back to, is this a maternal and child health project or is this a basic education and literacy project? So let's take a look. First of all, let's talk about the, the suburb, the village of Hout Bay. Hout Bay is a microcosm of all of South Africa. It's got two townships. One is a primarily a group of economic migrants from the rest of southern South Africa, or southern Africa. The Hangberg is a mixed community, mixed race community, uh, and they're local residents that have lived there permanently. Both of these communities are severely economically disadvantaged. And there's a middle-class community of about 17,000 people. So, back in March 2019, Carolyn got permission to go into one school, and they tested all the first graders and the seventh graders to see who needed glasses. So that was about 200 students in that primary school. They found that 30 students needed prescription glasses to see the blackboard in the school. That's about 15% of the students. So Carolyn marshaled her uh, uh, interna club's international connections. They raised funds in clubs in Europe, the US, and Canada. And they went back to test all five elementary schools in their community for the next three years. So what happens is a kid arrives, you know, we, go, we get to the school, we set up with the team, the kids arrive uh, brought down by the teachers, and we have a group of trained screeners who check to see if the student can actually read what's on the blackboard. If they can't actually read the English letters, what we do is we put up pictures of animals, fish, and birds, and things like that. If we determine that there's something wrong, that the children can't see the blackboard, they are referred by the screeners to the optician. 
the optician, in this case Chris, who volunteers his time for free, um, does a more detailed eye exam. And, and eventually, once we get the glasses in, the fitting of those glasses. So here are the results for the first three years. You can see we started out when we looked at all five primary elementary schools that we were at around 11% of students needed prescription glasses. And as we ramped up, um, we found that uh, in 2022, about 15% of students needed prescription glasses. And we think this has to do with lockdown and COVID where students were working in very poor light conditions in their homes rather than at the schools. They also last year conducted a test on the 10th grade, a one 10th grade high school class. In that case, they found almost 25% of the students couldn't read the blackboard and needed prescription glasses. So here we are, we've got all these smiling faces and as they, as they come into the room and they get their glasses, I can see is the thing you're hearing from around the room. But this is really about access to education and equal access to education. Students who can't see can't learn. And if we're not going to, we need to satisfy the needs of our students, be they glasses, safe classrooms, meals, and even desks, if they're going to be able to learn in school. So that brings us to the Tutu Desk campaign. Alex and I were at the uh, on Zoom at the International Assembly back in 2022, last year. And we joined a Zoom chat with Jennifer Jones and her husband, Nick. When asked what program or projects the district governor's spouses could support, Jennifer Jones recommended the Tutu Desk program and, and, and donations to it through the local Rotary Clubs. Alex and I went down different paths at that point. Alex contacted the Tutu Foundation and I contacted the Rotarians in Cape Town. Our paths converged with past District Governor Francis Collard from South Africa. He's from District 9400, which is the northern part of South Africa, uh, uh, includes Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Eswatini. Francis sent me five tutu desks, which I've been raffling off in my district. So the question we come to is, why tutu desks? Yes, bas basic education and literacy is one of Rotary's seven pillars. Also, we must promote education in all communities if we hope to promote economic development and all the other areas of focus of the Rotary Foundation. A tutu desk in the hands of a child promotes learning in schools that don't even have desks. Just like how Bay's vision projects, these are each steps on the road to global understanding, goodwill, and peace. I know most of you are familiar with Archbishop Desmond Tutu, affectionately known as Arch or The Arch, whose name has been lent to the Tutu Desk campaign. We were saddened by his passing on December 26, 2021 at the age of 90, just over a year ago. Tutu was well known for his opposition to apartheid and his work on South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission and is advocating for nonviolent solutions, which led to his Nobel Peace Prize in 1984. Tutu was also well known to Rotary. He was a Polio Plus supporter. He was awarded a Paul Harris Fellow by uh, Past District Governor Francis College District 9400. He was also a peace campaigner who spoke at Rotary's 2009 convention in Birmingham, England. At Tutu's state funeral on January 1st, 2022, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa said of Tutu that he was our moral compass and our national conscience. The President also said that Tutu was a patriot without equal, a leader of principle and pragmatism, who gave meaning to the biblical insight that faith without works is dead. So in closing, I'm reminded of Rotary's vision statement. Together, we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change around the globe, in our own communities, and in ourselves. And for me, the opportune word in the vision statement is that word together. Together, we meet as clubs, and we conduct our service projects together in our clubs. Two or more clubs may join together and do a global grant or district grant. 
we join Rotary because we know that together we can be much more effective and have a broader reach in doing our humanitarian service than we would be able to do individually on our own. So District Governor Alex, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak this evening and I will pass the gavel back to you. Thank you so much, Randall, that was wonderful. And with that, I think we're ready to go into our Q&A session. I'm going to add a few people here to my spotlight screen so that you have uh, our presenters tonight in front of you. And um, if you could, uh, when you would like to say a question, either raise your hand or just unmute yourself and go ahead. Unfortunately, Jennifer had to leave us because her flight had to take off, so she won't be able to take any questions, but the rest of us are all here for you. Um, and, and once we're done with the Q&A session, we have one more surprise for you, one more guest speaker in a video message, uh, but I won't say anything else about that. So let's open up for questions. Just unmute yourself and ask the question. I think it's the easiest way to do it. Nate has a question. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Oh, Alan. Alan, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if people could hear me. Um, uh, what are what is the goal? What are this a set of goals for the two two desks? What, yeah, I mean, I understand that you're 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 trying to collect some data. I'm just wondering what what where where are the what kind of goals you have for them. I can come in on that one, and and thank you for the question, Alan. Twenty million desks is a goal that has been mentioned. Whether we will do twenty million, that might prove to be just a bridge too far. That wasn't really my question. My question. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. My question was, what do you hope to accomplish with the goal educationally with the two two desks? What kind of educational goals do you have? Right. Basically, it is facilitating in, and improving uh, a child's ability in, in basic education and literacy to just give them a better tool tools to improve their learning ability at those very early formative years. That is, the, that is the key primary goal, because fundamentally, if a child does not have a firm writing surface to write on, and you have heard the stories that if they don't have that surface, uh, they sometimes write to, even kneeling on the ground, that's not conducive to a good learning experience. So it's improving the learning experience of the child. It's as general as that, it's as specific as that. How one measures it, um, you'll see from the that have seen from the impact study that there are a number of metrics, and hopefully through the impact studies we will be able to uh, inform ourselves better on those metrics as time goes by and as we have uh, put more desks into the community. But it's as basic as that to improve the child's learning experience is our key goal, and with the um, input that we've received from uh, from Charles's wife and 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 others to enhance the aid which the teachers have for educating the children from rote learning to uh, synthesis learning in a phonetic alphabet. There's also, Alan, I can send you a document uh, tomorrow via email if you'd like to. There is an impact study that was done. It's about 10 years old, so it's not the most accurate and current one but it actually has studied the impact of two desks in, in real life situations and in various schools. And I'm happy to share that with you. That'd be great. I'd love, yep. love to. I'll email it to you tomorrow. No problem. Uh, any other questions, please? And you can use the virtual raise hand button in Zoom or you can just unmute yourself. Please Hello. go ahead. So Nat Pulsifer here, Ipswich Club. Go ahead. Then. I have a question. What is the physical desk? Is it a two dimensional piece of covering that goes on an existing platform? Is it a board on which 
which sits on the children's knees. You want to take that one, Francis, or do you want me to respond? Sure, I, you you respond. You you okay. get through it, So it's it's a physical board. It's a it's a physical board, a physical piece of plastic um, that that you can uh, put on your lap. Uh, and I'm gonna put up a photo here in a second. Give me one one moment, please, to grab that piece of photo and share screen. So we can all see it. Uh, three, two, one, screen sharing on, and <laughs> here you go, right? So it's a physical piece of plastic uh, that's hard and rigid and has information printed on top of it. Uh, there's a carrying handle on top and um, the, the kids take it home. It belongs to them. And they bring it to school every day and they put it on their lap. It's the original laptop, right? Mm -hmm. And and it, it makes a remarkable difference because it's a sturdy writing surface. And if you if you've ever tried to take notes on a, a paper pad without a sturdy writing surface underneath, <laughs> you know how freaking hard that is. Um so it's thank a, you, it's, thank you, Alex. No, no, that's good. It is the original laptop. Thank you. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So it is. Thanks. Thank you. So just a very basic question. Obviously, I, I think I very much appreciate the purpose and usage of the desk, um, except I wonder if there's any other needs to go with the desks, like, such as pencils, uh, that maybe should be just part of the project. I don't know if they're short on those, too. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Uh, of course, the, the schools are short of, short of many things. Uh, we've decided to concentrate um, on the desks and... and um, Yes, it would be great to get involved in pencils. One thing which I didn't mention about the desks, and this ties in with the where we said we equip a complete school. So the question has been raised, well, you've given the school the desks for year one. Year two, the top class has moved out and they've gone on to high school and a new set of children have come in to the young grades and they don't have a desk. What about them? And we are busy uh, investigating that and following up to see how once we have identified a school that we can keep it equipped with two to desks for the duration as new a new cohort of uh, youngsters coming into the early classes each year. Um, not quite your question. We the we haven't gone into the pens, pencils, paper scenario. Um, that would be really uh, um, quite a task. Sure, the need would be there. The need would be there, but I can't answer you on the specifics except to say we have not really uh, uh, moved into that arena yet. Thanks. Not hearing any other questions. Uh, I want to take this time to really thank our presenters. Francis, thank you for staying up until uh, 2 a.m. <laughs> in South Africa. It, it's really amazing. Uh, thank you, Charlie, for, for taking the lead in, in our own Marble Rotary Club and for running with it and for being part of this presentation tonight. And thank you, Randall, for calling in from Honduras and, and for, for sending your presentation as a video link. And, and of course, thank you to Jennifer Jones for <laughs> jumping in from the tarmac. Um, I had hoped she would be able to make it, but I had not previously announced it, obviously, because it was a, a questionable whether or not we could make it happen. But I was very delighted that she was able to join us. And now I've said that there's one more person I want to um, have say a few words about the Tutu Desk campaign. And so without further ado, let me play a video to you where uh, the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu himself, lovingly known as the Arch, will say a few words about uh, this wonderful project. So we will give the Arch the last word tonight. I am proud to be the patron of the Tutu Desk campaign. In Sub-Saharan Africa alone, over 95 million children who go to school do not have a desk. Globally, the numbers are even more staggering. 
The Tutu test is a simple and a critical part of the school infrastructure which dramatically improves literacy development, access, retention and learning outcomes wherever it is deployed. I commit to help the Tutu Test campaign reach its goal of 20 million tests to 20 million children. forward to working with all of you to make sure that every child has the right to go to school and get an education. Bless you all and the important work that you do. Thank you so much. Um, thank you again to our wonderful guest speakers, Francis and Charlie and Randall and Jennifer. Um, and with that, our evening is coming to an end, a little bit past seven o'clock. Thank you all for signing up and registering for tonight. Thank you for donating $20 to the Tutu Desk campaign. And, and please uh, watch out for uh, a message in the upcoming e-bulletin. We're going to do a, a district grant um, where all Rotary Clubs can participate to fund some of these Tutu Desks. Uh, I've just been talking with our Rotary Foundation Chair, John Arsenal, about that today. And more details are coming up. So we, we hope that we can actually fund uh, at least one production run, if not two. Um, so thank you all for being part of this journey and have a wonderful good night.